So the goal now that we have our WebSocket server started is to actually push an event to our server. And then in the next part, what we will do is use Laravel Echo to listen for any of the events that are being pushed to our WebSocket server and relayed to any connected clients. So what we want is a Laravel event. So let's create a new tab in here and go into the WebSockets project. And let's run PHP Artisan make event. And for now, I'm just gonna call this test just to keep things really simple. So if we open up that test event, so test.php, that'll be in the app events directory just over here. Uh, we've got a couple of things that we wanna to do to make this work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just focus on public channels for now. So I'm gonna remove the private prefix from this channel. And I'm just gonna call this, let's just call this test. Now, the next thing we wanna do is make sure we implement the should broadcast interface. Now, what that will do is it will tell Laravel that this should be broadcast on the driver that we have set up just here, which is our pusher replacement. And to be honest, that's pretty much it. The only other thing I like to do here is just go and say broadcast with, and this is the payload, the structured payload that you want to broadcast with. If you've looked at broadcasting before in general, you'll know exactly what this does. You'll also know that any public properties that you set inside of this event when you broadcast it will be sent along with the payload. The broadcast with method is pretty much just to override how Laravel handles this uh, normally. So what I tend to do is just when I'm playing around here is do something like the following. It works just so we can see that when we start dumping out in the console and when we start checking this out inside of our Laravel WebSockets dashboard. Okay, so now that we have this, what we want to do is create up a really simple web route that we can just hit to broadcast this event. So I'm going to create out a route here called, uh, let's just say broadcast, that kind of makes sense. Let's create a just a simple closure based route here. And we're going to use the broadcast helper, we're going to pass the new test event in here. And of course, if you are implementing this in your project, you can pass through dependencies to build up the payload, really whatever you want to do. And let's just make sure we import that class just at the top there. So just doing that should broadcast that event and we should be able to see it in our Laravel WebSockets dashboard. So let's go ahead and just reconnect just to make sure that our server is up and running. And let's head over to our app and we'll go ahead and hit the broadcast uh, thing that we've just created there or the route that we've just created there. And sure enough, we get through an API message which tells us the channel, which is test, which we've just defined and tells us the event here as well. Now, if you are new to this stuff, then you can come over to the channels section under your routes and you can define out routes in here that have some kind of authorization or creating presence channels. All of that's in the Laravel documentation. So if you are wanting to implement real-time stuff into your projects, we have loads of courses on it, but you can also check out the Laravel documentation. But essentially, as an example here, we have a private user channel, which makes sure that the ID of the user, the currently authenticated user, um, in this case, equals the ID of the user we've passed here. So if we were authenticating on user channel one, the ID in this case in the closure would represent one and we would authenticate that channel. But we can just test this out with a public channel, which doesn't require a channel to be defined in our routes. And in fact, well, let's go ahead and just do that anyway, just so it's 100% uh, clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and create our test channel here, and I'm just gonna return true. So if we want to change this over later to authorize, we could just add some kind of condition in here to make sure that, that works. And we can get rid of the ID in this case because we're not doing anything with that. So the main thing here is that we can use this route now to broadcast an event, and a little bit later, or in the next part in fact, we can create a view component to listen for this and do something on the client side when this event rolls in with that data. So with that done, now that we know that we are successfully broadcasting via Laravel events, we can start to listen to that in the next part with Laravel Echo.